was the youngest patient that we've done, 28 years old. You would not believe the kind of um, arthritic change that he had. But 28 is, is the youngest that we've done for an osteotomy. We also use, in certain patients, uh, the Tomofix, where we can do an op acute opening wedge without bone grafting. Earlier, we used to use an opening wedge with bone grafting, but uh, with the availability of the Tomofix, we are now able to do an acute opening wedge, leave it open. The plate is strong enough to allow this to heal over a period of three to six months, and patient can be ambulant and weight-bearing. But then, this does not have the advantage of um, continuing to monitor. Whatever you fix on table is, is the, the uh, correction achieved. Even in fairly advanced disease, you get a patient like this. This is a so-called contraindication to uh, high tibial osteotomy. But when the patient is 40 years old with an x-ray like this and has significant pain, what are you going to do? Uh, in the early days, with due explanations, we, we have done this kind of thing. And this patient is now eight years down the line, still continues to be pain-free. In fact, has got the other side also operated. So realignment definitely takes care of the pain. How long it uh, leads to relief of pain is a question that still needs to be answered. Our longest follow-up in about six patients is uh, eight years of this kind. Subluxation of the knee, again so-called contraindication to high tibial osteotomy. But the moment the alignment is restored, this subluxation goes away. So many of the so-called contraindications to high tibial osteotomy uh, are really questionable in my mind. So why do I try to do it minimally invasive? The reason is that with a fixator, I can get as close to perfect alignment um, as I can. This is bone preserving. We don't take away any bone. And if ever a future surgery is required, we are not uh, interfering with that. <laughs> We've studied some of our patients, and what I want to highlight over there is, one, that in the post-operative period, when we, the patients that we've studied, there has been no patient with any remaining uh, virus, even in, in, inadvertently, because we've used the fixator, so we've been able to correct it absolutely perfectly. When we look at the hip knee angle, again, there has been no um, virus. Clinically, every patient had an impressive uh, relief of pain, practically from the day after surgery. Uh, we had one non-union, even in him, the pain of medial compartment osteoarthritis um, was relieved. Every patient, despite the fact that we had no Mackay effect, uh, the patellofemoral pain in all patients uh, improved, though some of them improved only to about 80 percent. Uh, all the patients with bilateral symptoms came up on their own for uh, surgery on the second side, which is a sort of proof that they are happy with the first side. We looked at the Elizarov and the Orthovix fixators separately. There was no difference in both of them in terms of accuracy of correction. And therefore, the difference is only one of convenience. The orthofix is more convenient. Earlier, there was a difference of cost. Today, with it being local, uh, there is no problem even of the cost. We had a few complications. Uh, Non-union, which settled down with reapplication of the fixator. We had some pin track infections. There was no permanent uh, pin track infection uh, remaining. In conclusion, therefore, this approach is extremely accurate. It preserves the anatomy. And this last statement needs to be proved that hopefully we should have a long-lasting um, relief. So my message at the end is not that all of you should start doing uh, you know, the, the osteotomy with a fixator, but whatever method it is that you choose uh, to use, whether it's a closed wedge, whether it's an open wedge, whether it's a standard or fixator-assisted osteotomy, I think you should define the problem to see where it lies. Uh, you should try to do an accurate planning and try to use an accurate technique. So coming back to the lion and the mouse, sometimes the mouse can help the lion. And if ever you need any 
sort of uh, help in relation to this. This my uh, email is very simple. If you can remember my name, Mangal Parihar, then my email is Mangal Parihar at parihar.com. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Mangal Pariha, for your nice, extensive talk on the high TB osteotomy, the one which has been neglected and very early done nowadays after the advent of uh, total knee replacement. So, any questions from the floor? Please use the mic, please. What is the role of? The role of chondroitin and Kindly. diacerin in a patient who has got virus malalignment is zero. The role of chondroitin and diacerin in patients who have virus malalignment is to improve the bottom line of the pharmaceutical company. That's it. If you've got virus alignment, you, you, you give whatever you want, it cannot uh, help. Even in patients who have normal alignment, 50% of the studies, as far as all these glucosamine and all that go, show that there is benefit. 50% of the studies show there is no benefit. But all of the studies show that they are more or less without any complication. Therefore, I don't object to someone taking them. But if there is virus alignment, definitely, I think there is no role for them. So, I'm Dr. Lokesh from Bangalore. My question is, what is the duration of your fixator uh, to which you keep the fixator? The minimum duration that we've kept it on for is uh, 10 weeks. Uh, and and on, an average, on an average, it takes about uh, 12 weeks, which is three months, the normal duration for any um, fracture to heal. And the incidence of pin track infection in such cases? Uh, in incidence of pin track infection overall it was, I think, about 21 um, patients had. But all of them, most of them, 18 were about grade 1 infection. That is just a soft tissue infection. And uh, that soft tissue infection settles down with, with uh, antibiotics. Most patients had it only once at the most during their treatment. I think two or three patients had it more than once during that duration. Now the objection which a lot of arthroplasty people would have is you put in pin sites there, uh, therefore you will you are you know, getting a possible chance of infection in the future. Uh, that is a technical sort of observation, but in my, from 94 onwards, this is 12 years of doing um, external fixation, I have never had a patient who has come back after the pins were removed with recurrence of infection at the pin site. We take a lot of care, we take a lot of care to uh, you know, put in the pins and all that properly. So, uh, there's no, I mean, uh, you have to take that care. But I don't think that the objection of potential pin side infection in an area of future total knee replacement is after, you know, 10 years, 8 years, 10 years, is it going to be a problem? I don't think so. <laughs>